guys? It's Jordan from laundromatresource.com and I am incredibly excited that you're here today because today we're going to talk about a topic that might just transform the way that you think about building wealth and, uh, and, and living a financially free life. I'm really excited about it today. I hope you're really excited about it too. Let's jump right into it. Today we're going to talk about something that I call the wealth tripod. Now, the wealth tripod, as you might guess, consists of three things, three very important things that if you can master, your wealth will increase uh, incredibly fast. So, and and I want to tell you about how laundromats uh, fit into each of these three things, because I think that laundromats, if you watch the last episode, laundromats are uh, poised to be one of the best, if not the best investment there is out there. So go check out that episode if you haven't watched it yet. Um, but I left off that episode by saying that if you can use laundromats to acquire real estate, that your wealth will compound incredibly. And I am going to tell you exactly how to do that. But today in this episode, I'm going to kind of lay a foundation for that so that in the very next episode, episode four, you'll be able to see exactly how this works and exactly why this works and why it's such a powerful technique um, and I am, uh, I can't wait to tell you that. Actually, I was a little bit nervous to tell you about how all this works, to be perfectly honest, because I feel like, uh, I just, oh man, if I share it with everybody, everybody's going to do it and it might leave me out in the cold, but I've been working really hard on changing my mindset on that stuff and having an abundance mindset. I want you to have an abundance mindset too. There's plenty for all of us to go around. So let's get involved and let's get going on this. So the wealth tripod, the very first leg of the wealth tripod is this. Now, a lot of people say cash is king. And while that's true, you can pretty much do anything you want to do with cash. Um, if you just have like a chunk of cash, doesn't really matter almost how big it is. Um, it could be a huge chunk of cash. It could be a little chunk of cash. But if you start doling it out all over the place, eventually your chunk of cash gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And then you're out of cash. Now, cash is king and, and money talks. But um, the thing that I think really in actuality is king is cash flow. Cash flow is king. Because if you're dishing out money on this end over here, but you got a stream of money coming in over here and it keeps refilling your money bucket. Well, that is uh, ideal. That's what we're all trying to do, right? That's why you have a job probably, or you have investments or a business because you need that cash flow to keep replenishing the money that you spend out to pay your bills, to uh, enjoy life with the people that you love, all the things that we need to spend money on. We need that cash flow. So uh, that's number one. And there are a few ways that you can get cash flow. You know, the most common by far way that you can get cash flow is through your day job. Your day job brings in cash flow. That's what it's all about. So you go to work, you get a paycheck, and that money comes into your bank account or wherever you keep your money, and you use that to pay your expenses and to live life and hopefully thrive in life. That's uh, the most common uh, form of cash flow that we're all pretty much familiar with. There are other ways to get cash flow also. For example, uh, you could purchase stocks that pay a dividend and that dividend that comes every quarter or year or whenever it comes uh, is consistent cash flow. So that's all that cash flow is, is money that's coming in consistently. That's all it means. So that can come from your job, from stocks. You can have maybe rental real estate uh, where you know somebody's paying a rent, you pay all your expenses and you get a little money in your pocket. That's cash flow too. Uh, and of course, the uh, the other main place that people can get cash flow is through business. And that is why I'm in the laundromat business is because I'm looking for cash flow. And as we talked about in the last episode, laundromats bring a pretty good cash flow, especially for the amount of work that they can take, which is not very much relative to other businesses. So Cash flow is king, not cash. Now try to picture this with me. Just Let's just go to fantasy land for a second. And let's say that every month, no matter what happens, $10,000 shows up in your bank account every single month, whether you work 
or you don't work or you go on vacation or you have a medical emergency or some hard times or anything, $10,000 every single month is going in your bank account. How do you feel? How does that make you feel knowing that money will be there every single month? That's what we're going for. That's what we're after. So I hope that this exercise of thinking about how that makes you feel gets you excited and drives you to want to have that feeling and have that experience. Because I bet you if you had $10,000 coming in every single month, life would look a little bit different for you. I bet you if you had $10,000 coming in every single month, you would be able to spend more time on the things that you love with the people that you love and less time doing things that you don't love. That's what we're going for. So cash flow is king. Laundromats are great for cash flow. So hey, man, first leg of the wealth tripod is cash flow and laundromats check that box. So let's talk about the second leg of the wealth tripod. So it's something that we're all familiar with. And you may understand it or you may not, but I'm just going to put it in very simple terms. And the second leg of the wealth tripod is equity buildup. Now, equity, all equity means, this is what equity is. Equity is money that's stored in an investment. So think about it like this. This is how most of us are familiar with equity. Uh, you buy a house, let's say you buy a house for $100,000. You put $20,000 down, you get an 80% loan. So you have a loan for $80,000. That means you have $20,000 stored in your house as equity. So it's your money. It's just not cash. It's stored in your investment. Now, equity sounds sometimes we can have this uh, love-hate relationship with it, right? Because maybe if you're struggling to buy a house right now, you're trying to figure out how do I get this money to put down as equity so that I can get a loan so that I can have a house, right? And it feels like it ties up your money and it ties up your cash flow. And that's kind of true. However, equity buildup can really help accelerate the growth of your net worth. And let's talk a little bit about how that works. So we're mostly familiar with using our cash flow to build equity. And the way that that happens in real life for the majority of us that do this is we buy a house, we have cash flow coming in from our nine to five job, and we use that cash flow to pay our loans down, which pays interest and a little bit of the principal of our house, which basically is storing more and more money in our investment, right? So we're used to having cash flow pay to build equity. And that's not ideal because what's king? Not equity. Cash flow is king. Now, if you can find businesses or investments where you can build the equity a little bit faster, then it the equation reverses on itself all of a sudden. You can take your equity and convert it into cash flow instead of taking your cash flow and turning it into equity. Let me give you a very simple example from real estate, because again, most of us are mostly familiar with real estate. So let's say you have an investment property, you own it, it's a $100,000 uh, is what it's worth, and you only owe $50,000 on it. So you have $50,000 of equity or money that's stored in that property. Awesome, except for you can't really do anything with it because it's just stored in that property. So what you decide to do is, is go to the bank and say, hey, I have this property, it's worth $100,000, I only owe $50,000, can I get some money out of that and refinance it? This is called a cash out refinance. So the bank says, sure, we'll make sure it's worth $100,000, okay, it checks out. Uh, we will give you 80% of that. So they're gonna give you $80,000, but you only owe $50,000. So what you do is you take $50,000 out of your $80,000, pay off your loan, and now you have $30,000 of cash. Cash is awesome, but cash is not king. Cash flow is king. So what you can do is take that $30,000 that you got from your house and put it into an investment that creates cash flow. 
like a laundromat or another real estate property or another business that you want to try to start or stocks that pay a dividend or whatever it is that you want to invest in, right? So you can take that $30,000 and for example, uh, go find a, another house investment property that's worth $120,000. You put your 20% down, which is your $30,000. And now you can cash flow a couple hundred bucks a month. So now you have two properties and they're both cash flowing. And you did that by converting your equity to cash flow. Okay, but something else happened in that example that I didn't even mention that is a really powerful tool of equity is that when you took your loan out for $80,000 and paid off your $50,000 loan and took $30,000 of cash, you did that tax free. So that's $30,000 that you just got access to tax free to use in another investment. And it's tax free because it's a loan. It's not your money. It's a loan. But someone else is paying that loan off for you because you bought investments with it. So you can see where this can start to be really powerful because now you're building equity in two properties. You bought that second one with money that you acquired tax free and it would have been taxed up the wazoo if you got that from your job, but you did it tax free. And now you have two properties. Both of them have tenants that are paying down the principal payments. They're paying off your loan payments. So you're building even more equity in both of them and both of them are cash flowing. And this is a very, very powerful thing where well, you can do the same exact things with laundromat where you're building equity in your laundromat. And you can do that in a couple of different ways. So the first way that you can build equity in a laundromat is by just, if you get a loan to, to purchase your laundromat, you're just paying down your loan. So you're taking your cash flow and you're using that to pay down the loan and building equity, just like we do with our houses, right? So that's building equity in your business, which is really good thing because it's helping to increase your net worth and it's other people's money, the people who are coming in to use your laundromat that you're using to pay down that loan and building equity, which is building your net worth, which is really awesome. So that's the first way you can build equity. The second thing that you can do is increase your revenue, increase the money that's coming in every month. So you can do that in a variety of different ways, whether that's putting in new machines into your laundromat, whether that's uh, bringing in new vending, whether it's doing better promotions or advertising to get more customers in, whether that's renovating the place. All of those things can help you increase the money coming in to your laundromat. And remember from the last episode, if you, your cash flow, your net operating income increases, that increases the value of your business, which means you're building equity. So let's say for example, you bought a laundromat for $200,000. And uh, if you remember, laundromats are valued somewhere between three and a half and four and a half times the net operating income. So let's just say, well, let's just take the four number. So that means you're bringing in $50,000 a year of net operating income, which is pretty good, right? But let's say you figured out a way to increase the revenue of your business. And now you're getting an extra five, uh, let's do $10,000 uh, a year of income. So now you're bringing in $60,000 a year. Well, now your business is worth $240,000. That's 60,000 times four gives you $240,000 a year, which means you've increased the equity or the value of your business by $40,000, which means $40,000 just went into your net worth bucket. The number three way that you can build equity in your laundromat business is by decreasing your expenses. Now remember, your, your laundromat is valued by the net operating income, which is the all the money coming in to your laundromat over here, minus all of your expenses over here, not counting loans, that's your net operating income. Well. If you have the same income coming in, but less expenses, then you're gonna have a higher net operating income. So instead of that $50,000 a year of net operating income, in our last example, you're bringing in $55,000 a year because you're able to save $5,000 a year on whatever by putting new machines in and your utility bills go down or whatever, uh, then your business is now gonna be worth 
55,000 times four, which I didn't do ahead of time and let's see. You can do that math. But anyways, you're building equity in your business by decreasing expenses. So the three ways you can build equity are by paying down your loan and having other people do that, the customers that are coming to your laundromat. So that's building your net worth and building equity in your laundromat. You can increase your income or you can decrease your expenses. And the real power comes when you can do all three of those all at the same time and your equity starts to jump. So laundromats, check that box of the second leg of the wealth tripod, which is building equity in your business. The third leg of the wealth tripod is tax write-offs or being tax advantaged. Now, this is really powerful. I, I uh, saw this website, taxfoundation.org, and I, I was looking on there, and they uh, have a stat on there that was kind of depressing, actually, and basically, they did a calculation, and there's a they do this, I think, every year, um, where they they uh, declare a tax freedom day. And a tax freedom day is this: it's the day where you've worked all year, and this is the day where you've paid off all your taxes, and everything else uh, essentially is tax free. And it's kind of depressing because uh, tax freedom day, according to taxfoundation.org, in 2018 was April 19th, which means that you worked from January 1st to April 19th in order just to pay the government taxes. April 19th. That means from January to mid to late April, you're working straight for the government. And that's kind of depressing and sad. And I'm really sorry that I just did that to you. Um, However, the third leg of the wealth tripod is this being tax advantaged and having tax write-offs. And again, you need to seek out a CPA, a qualified CPA or an accountant who can help you sort through all the taxes. Because as I've heard before from uh, just different podcasts and YouTube videos that I've watched, the tax code is actually mostly just a book of telling you how to not pay taxes legally. So if you can follow that, follow the IRS's guideline for you, then you're going to be in a better situation and your personal tax freedom day is going to come much, much sooner. And this is the secret of how wealthy people, like for example, all these accusations about Donald Trump not paying taxes, well, a lot of times, and I can't speak for him personally, but a lot of times these wealthy people are doing this in legal ways. They're just being smart about how they use their money. We talked a little bit the last episode about how uh, taxes differ from uh, our personal taxes versus business taxes. And on just a quick recap, when we uh, pay our normal taxes, we work and we get a paycheck. But before that paycheck comes, the government takes out their portion of our money. And so we get taxed on everything that we earn and then we get whatever's left over. Now, uh, businesses work a little bit differently because when for a business, we get this income and then we spend it on our expenses. And then after we spend it on our expenses, whatever's left over, the government taxes that. So the difference being we personally uh, spend it, our money on our expenses after taxes are taken out. Businesses spend their money on expenses before taxes are taken out. Taken out, So that is a huge tax benefit of businesses, and it can dramatically decrease the amount of money that you, uh, that you pay in taxes, which means your tax freedom day gets earlier and earlier. Also, uh, another way that I've used in order to decrease my tax burden is to take the machines that I've bought, and the government allows you uh, allows you to depreciate those over a certain period of time. And you uh, basically what that means is the government is saying, hey, I realize that you bought these machines, you bought them new, used, whatever, you paid this much money for them. Next year, they're going to be a little more used. And so they're going to be worth a little bit less. And if they're worth a little bit less, then maybe uh, you can just take that off of however much less it is, take that off of your income so let's say you brought in $50,000 for, uh, for the year uh, that's going to be taxed. Well, 
the government says, okay, your the value of your uh, uh, assets, which are your laundromat machines, are going to depreciate. So uh, over a certain period of time, so they let you divide the value of your assets divided by that period of time. So let's just say that gives you a number of five thousand dollars. Well, all of a sudden, your tax burden goes from fifty thousand dollars. You get to depreciate that five thousand dollars. So now your tax burden is not fifty thousand dollars; it's forty-five thousand dollars. So when you write that in on your tax forms, you're claiming that you brought in forty-five thousand dollars, even though you really bought it, brought in fifty thousand dollars. But they've allowed you to depreciate that five thousand dollars. So that's five thousand dollars that you just got tax-free. Long story short. So that's huge. And if you can start piling on these tax advantages, your tax burden gets less and less and less because you're doing what the government wants you to do. And that's what the tax code is. The tax code is the government's roadmap of what they want you to do to help move our economy forward. So if you're using your expenses before you pay your taxes for a business, the government wants you to do that. And if you're depreciating your machines, the government want, wants you to do that. So follow what the government says and decrease your tax burden and let your tax freedom day get earlier and earlier and earlier uh, every year. But you can see how if you're in, for example, a 30% tax bracket, you bring in $100,000 a year, you're paying $30,000 of income tax to the government. That's not counting all the other taxes uh, that we pay, uh, sales, I, there's so many taxes that we pay, property tax, sales tax, all this stuff that we're paying. We're just talking strictly income tax, 30% of your money, $30,000 is going away, $30,000. So if you can get that number from $100,000 and decrease it by paying your expenses before you pay your taxes. Now all of a sudden you're down to $50,000 and you depreciate your machines, you're down to $45,000. Well, all of a sudden your tax rate, uh, it, while being the same, the amount of taxes you pay for the same amount of income, that $100,000 versus the $45,000 is less than half. So that's very, very powerful in building your wealth. Now, uh, this is all just an imaginary scenario. And uh, and numbers were not, I didn't calculate any of these numbers or anything like that, but I'm just trying to illustrate the power of decreasing your taxes. It can really, really help accelerate build, building your wealth. So the three legs of the wealth tripod are cash flow, equity buildup, and tax write offs or tax advantages. So if you're looking to get wealthy, I think that laundromats can really, really help you accelerate building your wealth. And they do that by providing you with great cash flow, opportunities to build up equity and build up your net worth through that, and opportunities to decrease your tax burden. And all three of those things combined really help accelerate your wealth. So I hope that you found this a little bit intriguing at least and a little more interested in laundromats. If you have questions, please leave questions uh, or comments down below. Uh, give me a like, give me a subscribe because I'm gonna be coming with more and more content about how to find and analyze and purchase and run a laundromat in a way that can help you build your wealth too. So I look forward to seeing you in the very next episode. I can't wait, I'll see you soon. Oh, 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 oh,